Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're back again with our pandemic projects and hopefully one of these days we're going to be able to say we're not doing pandemic projects any longer because there's no pandemic. But for now there is. That's unfortunate. And uh, we're going to continue to try and do these on a daily basis, trying to keep everybody entertained while they stay quarantined. Uh, first and foremost, a special thank you to all of the first responders. Uh, those frontline workers, those emergency workers that are trying to keep us safe during this, thank you for all it is that you do. It really is appreciated. Well, today we're just going to continue. This one comes from JP. Uh, we've done a couple of his reels in the past. This is a beautiful example of a later edition of the Pen 85 Seaboy. And uh, he bought it on one of the auction sites and he just asked me to make sure that it gets tuned up and that it, uh, it does what it can. And, he sent me a couple of others, and just as a quick aside, we're going to show you that we'll do those as well. Here's a beautiful South Bend 880. It's a little sluggish, but otherwise it's, it looks like it just came off the shelf. So I'm going to assume that the only thing that needs to be done in here is give it the old grease and clean that up. Okay, uh, he seems to be a collector of the South Bend reels, because here's the 840. Again, this one seems like the, the grease isn't even loose, but again, he would like me to just make sure that everything is functional and ready to go on that. And then I got one back. Uh, we had worked on this one earlier. This is a Mustang 320, and for some reason now the bale is caught. So we don't know if it's a spring or what it is, but uh, at any rate, uh, we will take this apart and try to fix the spring on that one as well. I just want to see if this fires. Yeah, it's a, it's a bad spring. So we'll go reload that spring or get a replacement or try and get a replacement for that to make this little guy work. So we're going to do the, the Model 85 right now. The Model 85 is the Seaboy. It's one of the first of uh, the reels that Penn introduced back in the 30s. And uh, this one's a later edition. This one has the chocolate cover on it. it uh, the, the side plates have changed over time. The original ones were black and uh, they had a wooden knob. The um, internal gearing on this one is almost identical to the Model 60 Long Beach or the 285 Belmar, uh, Delmar. The, the differences on the reels, this one came with just the Bakelite side plates and then you went to a Delmar and the Delmar had a metal spool and it also had the 65 handle, the, the, uh, the bigger handle that uh, we're, we're used to seeing with the Bakelite knob. And then the Long Beach reel came and it had the internal metal side plates to help uh, absorb some of the shock because what will happen on a Delmar and what will happen on these, if you hit a rail with these, these will shatter. And uh, that's probably the biggest weakness of all of these. So we're going to take this apart. We'll show you how to uh, service this reel and uh, either put it in fishing or put it in your collection. I'm not quite sure what he's going to do. But uh, let's take it apart and I'll show you. He said that uh, he thought that the reel was well maintained. It's kind of maintained. It has been used. We can see that there is some pitting on the uh, uh, on the crossbars. So it is a used reel, but uh, probably not used that much and probably just subject to some salt. You can also see the freckling on the uh, reel seat. And uh, that uh, that's another fault of the, not fault, but it's another Telltale of the 80s, uh, 85s versus the um, the Delmars and the Long Beach is that these posts uh, weren't as well chromed as the others. So I start by taking the external parts off. You just saw me remove the handle. When I remove that handle, I use the screwdriver. It doesn't have the traditional uh, scallop uh, screw head. It has a flat bladed screw, uh, screw instead. Uh, no big deal there one way or another, but uh, it is a difference. With the scallop one, you get a tie down, a little set screw that keeps that, hand, that screw from moving out. In this case, uh, with the, the main screw on this reel, it does not do that. So I'm just taking out the side plate screws now. You can see the greening here on those crossbars, so it does say that it has been used. Um, and it would probably be salt water because fresh water typically doesn't cause that greening and corrosion uh, on a reel, but uh, kind of hard to say. The other thing with this one is it has the, uh, the plastic uh, Bakelite spool. Those were subject to, to chipping 
Um, the big problem with that one, it wasn't that it was going to get whacked. It's kind of hard to hit that thing. But what happens is if you get excessive play in the spool, and that'll happen because of the spool adjuster coming out. If you, if you move the spool adjuster out, you'll see there's a gap here. And so what happens typically is that the spool adjuster moves out. You get that gap, line wraps around the inside of that when you're cranking. And then when you go to pull it out, it'll chip the, the side of the, uh, uh, of the spool there. So a lot of folks who have these reels and like these reels switched them over to the, the metal spool of the Delmar or the metal spool of the... Um, um, Long Beach 60 and, uh, and that kind of solved the problem there. Well internally this one's in good condition. There is some dried grease going on up top here but it is a clean reel which says that it, it kind of had a minimum of use. Same thing in the back here but again you can tell that the reel has been used because this clicker should have a strong point on it and it's got a worn point so it has been fishing and uh, you can just kind of have to live with that this uh, this point is not replaceable and again you can see the wear on the the internal part here I'm just gonna do him a little bit of a favor here I'm gonna grab a little bit of the steel wall and a little bit of metal polish and just kind of rub that down try to make that a little bit prettier on the inside Sometimes what happens when you get a reel on eBay is that somebody will do the superficial cleaning on the outside, but they don't take the reel off on the inside to get to the, the posts on this side of it. Not a problem. If you were to do a thorough cleaning, you would remove the, the posts completely. Uh, it looks like we did get some kind of uh, polishing going on here. Again, you got the freckling on the bottom which says that this did have some salt sitting on it for a while. But we'll just do a little bit of a favor here. And I'm just going to take a paper towel to kind of clean that up. As best I can. This isn't uh, a restoration. This one's just kind of let's make sure that it all works and that he got a fair deal. I don't know what he paid in price, but the externals are in pretty good condition. We're going to put some grease into the adjuster, the bearing. I'm going to make sure that we tighten it down there after I illustrated that piece. I'm going to take the spool, which is clean, and put that back in. And let's go over to the side plate then and we'll show you how to service this. So the side plate is very similar to the other pen designs. I guess the question is whether we have a spring inside or we have a, a flat, uh, flat bar spring or a coil spring. Coil springs came in 1957. This reel was after that, so I believe that we will have a coil spring in there. So what I like to do when we do the um, removal of a side plate of a pen that has that kind of a setup, I cut my hand around that because when I push that bridge plate through, I don't want to lose that coil spring. and. Uh, We'll see what goes on there. I also want to set this to the off position, high, so it's in free spool mode right now. That way you don't catch the uh, pinion gear on the uh, assembly as you push through. Okay, so we've pushed through. Now we're uh, going to find that coil spring. That's the coil spring I was referring to right there. And fortunately, I guess the, the grease kind of held that in. And uh, to answer the uh, the owner's question, I believe it was oiled, but not, uh, it looks like we have some old grease on there. But then again, I look and I see blue grease inside here, so it was probably taken care of. So I think the, uh, the eBay seller was probably being fair and honest with this one. I'm going to push this through just to make sure that uh, we're okay. <clears throat> okay, with the gear. Now you would do this regardless of what the condition of your 85 or your, your Delmar is. You would pull that through. Well, yeah, I think that's, that looks like it's been greased. I don't know why we have the older grease on the outside and blue grease on the shaft. That doesn't make much of a sense there. So let's get that old stuff off there that, that doesn't have any value. So let's, uh, let's just clean that off. I'm going to go ahead and re reinstall some blue grease onto the shaft there. You don't need much. And then we can just take our 
gear sleeve, put that back on, push that pin back in to secure it. That pin rides are one of those grooves that you saw on that piece. Then let's just take a look here. We've got a good washer on the back of the main gear. Push the other washers through. I would expect to see the um, leather washers on this one. I do see the leather washers on this one. There's a little scarring going on on the one. Again, that's out kind of evidence that these have been fished with. They seem to be flexible enough. You want to check the ones. If they start to crack, then you certainly want to replace them. I also have some ridging going on here, so I'm going to take my steel and won't give it a that. That's just part of the old washer. A leather washer is organic, so it is going to uh, shed and rot and deteriorate over time. So we'll just clean that up. And because they are the leather washers, I want to make sure that they remain flexible, so I'm going to use some, some uh, drag washer grease here. It's Cal's Universal Drag Grease. I'm going to just spread a little bit onto the washer like that. Then I'm going to use my gloved hand to make sure that I rub it in there. And then we can install that in. There's two types of washers that are the metals. You have a round washer with flat sides. That's called a key washer. You have a, a round washer with a round hole in the middle with two prongs that come out of it. That's called an ear washer. Keyed washers go high and low, and the one ear washer goes in the middle. We'll do that again here after installing the first. Again, make sure that we get a nice coating of the grease on there. Don't overload it. It's only going to get squeezed out when you go to uh, tighten the drags, but make sure that you have enough on there that uh, the washer is nice and coated with it. And if you have any excess, you can always go in and just wipe it off with a paper towel. All right, it's the last of that, the last of the heat washers, and then we have a cap washer which goes on top, so your bridge is, is been serviced. Looks like all of the screws or a few of the screws stayed. You'll notice I have a, a parts tray behind me here where I put all the pieces and parts. So we'll go ahead and we're going to pull the assembly then. We'll go clean out the channels here. There's some old grease that has pulled out of there. Otherwise, this is in pretty good condition all around. And maybe just a little bit of uh, additional cleanup with a cotton swab. But for the most part, this is a clean reel. Nothing more needs to be done. I put a drop of oil onto the eccentric. I'm going to use a fishing reel oil. It's Real X, it's an aftermarket reel oil. Just get it in behind there. That's going to lubricate the little uh, insert point for this. That's the eccentric. And we can take our two springs, put these back in. There's a cavity that those two springs fall into. Then I'm going to put a little bit of grease onto the gear side bearing. I want to get that so that the spool grabs some of that on the way in. That's where the spool's side is going to go. But I also want to get some around the outside of it so that the spool gear, or pinion gear, is uh, going to be lubricated from the inside of it as well. Then I'm going to grab a brush and clean those teeth out. I don't want any anything hung up in those teeth. I'm also checking the teeth while I'm doing this. I want to make sure that that's just discoloration. I don't want uh, pieces of debris or anything in there. If I see something, I have a small pick. I can run that down the, the channels and just clear out any dried grease or the like. I'm not seeing anything. This is pretty clean. It's just all grease coloring. And then uh, we have a little bit of, of grease sitting on the yoke, so we'll get rid of that. And I'm going to use a steel wool for that. If you find that it's stubborn, you could go in and use some uh, WD-40 or a penetrating oil or something, a degreaser like power, uh, purple power or the like. You could use other things just to kind of dissolve the grease, but most of the time this will work perfect. All right, so now we have the yoke. Put a little bit of grease on the shoulders. 
that's for the slot that the uh, pinion gear is going to ride in. When I do that, then I'm going to insert the pinion gear. I'm also going to put a little bit in that slot, as well as make sure that the teeth on the pinion gear get a good coating of grease. I'll lay that down for a moment because I want, while I have my brush on, make sure that I get the grease onto the main gear. You don't have to get the grease in every tooth. The rotation of the, the gear will spread that out over time. And again, you don't want to overload it with grease either. Okay, so we have our two springs in. Yoke goes in next. That rides right onto the, the shaft. We're going to push that down now and we're going to be able to hook our jack onto the assembly like that. And that's kind of how we found it. And then we're going to install the bridge. So to install the bridge, you have two different types of bridge screws. You may not have noticed that on the way out. You have a partially threaded screw and you have a fully threaded screw. The partially threaded screws go up top. That's where the springs are. And so the partial threading where it's smooth is where the springs are riding so that they don't catch. And then the fully threaded screws go below. And to set the anti-reverse dog in, you grab the bridge assembly and place it in the reel and you turn it approximately perpendicular to the, the way that it will finally sit. Grab one of those fully threaded bridge screws, the bottom right hand corner if it's a right hand turning reel. You have your anti-reverse dog, it sits up and that creates a cavity here. You can see the, the, the hole here. And that's where that little screw, uh, spring that we took goes. And you have to be careful with this. It's a spring. It's going to shoot if you're not careful. I felt it go in the channel there. And that's how it's properly loaded. Then that's your spring. And then you continue the rotation over. And before you do too much more, you want to start by tightening down this couple of turns. Don't tighten it down all the way until you have all of those springs set, or the screws spread rather. But uh, tighten it down enough that it's holding. Then take a partially threaded one. I go kind of opposite corners when I do this. I have a little bit of a, uh, we're not aligned here, so I want to just use my tool to see if I can't get a little bit better alignment on that. That tool is not a commercially available tool. I've mentioned it before. It happens to be the bottom of an electric tester. And, uh, the tester had a little light bulb in it that indicated when the circuit was open on an automobile uh, circuit and it broke or wore out or blew a fuse or whatever it did but the pick is really what I wanted because that little centering pin there does so much. You saw me clearing the channel on a gear before with it. Just saw me using it there as a centering pin and so on. Alright, now I have all four screws are in. So I can go back and tighten these in the opposite way that I just installed them. North, east, south, west, you want to keep the tension proper on this reel so that you don't bind it and then you can give it a test. And this reel is working just the way it should be working. Final steps then, we're going to come back and reassemble by putting some grease onto the spool shaft so that we get some, some grease into the, the hole of the, the gear going to align this and the best way to do this one is to set the the um, free spool release to off that way you don't have any tension in the reel from the springs and then again you have two different sizes of screws here you have a long screw and you have a short screw the short screws belong in the bottom the long screws belong in the crossbars so let's go ahead and put that together I'm going to start by putting one, there's six screws, one in each of the key areas. So there's top side bar, cross bar, one in the real seat. I'll take another long one to the right hand cross bar. And that way I keep equal pressure on the side plate. Now I can go back and take the other three in no particular order because I've pretty much stabilized the reel. I'm going to put the short screw in the reel seat again. The other side. Take the long one. Put it into the second crossbar on this side. 
and I'm still seeing a little bit of corrosion there. I'm not, I'm not sure I can get that greening off. I'll kind of do the best I can there. Again, these are notorious for bronzing in that it's a thin coat of chrome as opposed to the others. So over time, you had a lot of chrome wear on these and uh, they turned bronze. Didn't affect the performance of the reel at all, just was a cosmetic kind of a thing. But you will notice that on the 85s more than you notice it on the the Delmars or the Long Beach reels. Okay, we have the gear sleeve uh, ferrule then. And we have our top star adjuster. And we have our handle. And the handle screw. And again, there's no set screw hole in the handle here as you would see on other pen reels that have the, the bigger Bakelite knob on them. I guess even back then, you know, a penny save kind of a deal. For whatever reason, I have a little difficulty getting this started. There we go. And always use a screwdriver whose blade equals the slot. In this case, I have a wide screwdriver for it. Don't try using something like this in there. Uh, you'll probably wind up just uh, ruining the slot. And at some point in time, it may be that the screw can't be removed because this slot is totally worn. All right, let's see how we do. We got it spinning nicely. There's a little bit too much play in the spool, so let's just adjust that a little bit. You need side-to-side -side play in a spool, but you don't need a lot. Remember what I was saying before, if this comes out too far, a line can get dragged behind there. And then uh, once that gets dragged behind there, especially with a plastic or Bakelite spool, you can have an issue. Well, that was just my luck. The battery ran out just as we were doing the final test. So we want to make sure that the reel turns nice and smooth. In this case, you have a uh, little bit of a handle uh, on a stud. You can put some oil in there. I also noticed some greening in there, which is an indication that the uh, the reel has been out fishing. We want to test the drag. Tighten that down. There we go. Drag is operational. If you're storing the reel and you're not going to use it for a while, back that drag off. You don't need it compressing. You'll have a situation where you saw before with the, the drag washers where eventually the drag washer will dry up and dry onto the metal and be in uh, ineffective, so back it off if you're not using it. And uh, that's it. That's your Pen Seaboy uh, 85. This one's a later version, probably from the 70s, 60s, 70s, somewhere in there. Uh, nice reel overall. I don't think he got he went wrong with the purchase at all. Again, uh, from a cleanliness standpoint and the like, it's, uh, it's got wear appropriate for the age, probably a little bit better than the average reel that you'll find out there. And um, I hope that uh, that answers this question, how was it? But we now know it's all tuned up and ready to go fishing. So again, if you're a first responder, thank you for everything that you do. If, uh, if you've been watching these videos and uh, this has encouraged you to, to go service your own reels, well, that's the whole purpose behind this. If you don't have that inclination, but you have a reel that needs to be serviced, well, please contact me. I do provide that service by mail and I'll be happy to uh, share that information on Real Repair with you. Again, if you're a first responder, thank you for everything it is that you do, uh, particularly during this pandemic. We really do appreciate your efforts. And uh, one of the efforts I've been making is that I will service one of your reels at no cost because you've got more important things to do. So if you're a first responder, please contact me as well uh, about how to send your reel in for servicing. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you. Have a great day.